Good morning, everyone. Welcome to AOSCX Security Enhancement Update. My name is Yash. I work for Aruba as Global Technical Marketing Engineer. As part of AOSCX 10.6 release, we are introducing two new features as enhancement to port access security. One is auth priority. Another feature is cache reauth under the port access role. The auth priority feature is so important when you have a clients, when they get onboarded on a network, they comes up with no supplicant installed on those clients. Say an access point or a compliance laptops or take an example of a phone which is not having the EAP supplicant to start the dot one x authentication. In those use cases, auth priority becomes handy. Where cache reauth coming onto each port access role, you can have a cache reauth for per client basis. You can create a role under the role. Now you can have a cache reauth. Earlier, this feature was there under the interface or the port level where all the clients which are getting onboarded on that port will get cache reauth where now you have a way to classify the uh, cache reauth under the port access role. Let's look at this feature in detail in next few slides. So as we described, the auth priority feature is much required for clients like Aruba access points or phones are also for some of the laptops which comes without preloaded supplicants or software or the certificate to use the dot one x authentication for those client we have to initially onboard using a mac authentication once the client is onboarded with the mac authentication we can install the required supplicant on those clients so that they will be capable of dot one x authentication first what will happen is as soon as the client is getting onboarded it will get onboarded with the mac based authentication and it will download the required supplicant onto those devices to achieve this a simple mechanism which is getting introduced as part of 10.6 is known as the auth priority to set this, what you have to do is you have to set the authentication preference, the precedence as the MAC auth followed by a dot one X and authentication priority as dot one X followed by a MAC auth. As you do this, what happens is the client will start with the MAC based authentication because the auth precedence is the MAC based authentication and get into a role of Mac based authentication where it can download the supplicant. It will continue to try for the highest authentication mechanism because the auth priority on that port is configured as dot one X followed by the Mac auth. So what happens is as soon as it has a right supplicant or the certificate or the software, the client will start a EAP identity request. Then the EAP process will continue and the client will get the EAP success. That is how the auth priority feature will become so handy as part of the 10.6. I will also explain how this feature you can achieve with 10.5, but there is a lot of manual intervention an admin has to go through. Remember, re-authentication will be triggered for all high priority methods, not just for final successful authentication methods means the re-authentication process let's consider the supplicant due to some reason the certificate get expired on the client then automatically the mac auth will be triggered for that client and the client will get back to a mac authenticated role that way anytime the supplicant will have a one or the other role as authenticated depending on that role it can download the patch and get onto a network automatically without an it admin let us see this feature, how it was working in case of a 10.5. In case of a 10.5, we had an auth precedence as Mac auth followed by a dot one X. In that case, what used to happen, the client can get into a Mac auth role and download that dot one X supplicant. But the problem is 
it cannot do a re-authentication by itself or it cannot trigger a dot one x authentication by itself because somebody has to change that auth precedence in case of a 10.5 image problem with the changing is whenever there is a certificate getting expired it is not automatically getting into a mac auth role admin has to keep watching that network when the certificates or the software or the supplicant is getting expired and he has to do that manual process where with the 10.6 image, because we are setting the auth precedence as Mac auth followed by a dot one X and auth priority as dot one X followed by a Mac auth, anytime the supplicant certificate expires or as the new devices comes onto a network without any preloaded software or supplicant or certificate, we can install them by using the auth precedence once it is installed, we can use the auth priority to authenticate those client. That is the benefit you are getting with 10.6 EOS CX 10.6 auth priority feature. The recommended configuration for EOS CX 10.5 is on your left hand side. If you want to make use of the 10.6 auth priority and the precedence together, the configuration is on the right hand side. The highlighted configuration is what you are getting it mainly on the 10.6 image. Remember one thing, auth priority and the concurrent authentication are orthogonal features because concurrent authentication serves the same purpose just by enabling on the port where for some clients when you need a supplicant download you, and you have the auth precedence you need to configure the auth priority then only you can achieve the same functionality as concurrent authentication if you have a aos switch and if you are looking for an equivalent configuration on a aos cx switch this is how you are going to go let's see the demonstration of this feature in next few minutes so what we are going to do in this demo is I have a AOS CX switch, which as you see on the screen, and first we are going to authenticate a client using a Mac auth, because as you see on the screen, the port level configuration auth precedence is configured with the Mac auth followed by a dot one X. And we'll download the supplicant onto this client. The client is C1. Currently it is a AOS switch, which I'm going to enable the dot one X supplicant on the AOS switch. With that, the same client will be capable of sending a dot one X request and get authenticated using the if mechanism. Okay, as you know, the first we are going to attempt with the Mac auth. That means there is no supplicant installed on the C1. It will get authenticated using the Mac authentication because of the auth precedence. Because the auth priority is dot one X the same client will be keep trying for dot one X till it gets succeeded with that highest auth priority. Once it has that supplicant, it will automatically roll to a dot one X profile. Let's see this demo. As you see on the screen, I have a, this is a AOS switch, which is currently um you can see this is a aos switch uh, 2540 and this switch considered as an access point or your laptop which is a compliance laptop or the phones which comes up with only mac based authentication then it will install the supplicant onto those similarly we are trying the same with this demonstration so i have a aos cx uh, switch on the left hand side and aos switch which is acting like a client or a supplicant at this point of time. So now let us look into show running config of this port where it is getting onboarded one slash one slash one. You can see here I have configured with auth precedence as Mac auth followed by a dot one X and auth priority which is getting introduced. This is the command which is getting introduced as part of 10.6 and hence we have configured the auth priority as dot one X followed by a Mac auth. As I don't have the supplicant configured on the EOS switch, the client is now getting authenticated using the Mac based authentication. Let us watch that one show port access client 
will tell us what is the client is getting authenticated with. You can see here it is getting authenticated with a MAC based authentication. The client onboarding method is MAC based and it is success and it is in the role which is called dot one X supplicant download. So if you see the dot one X supplicant role is an LUR role. It is what this is what you can see here. This is you can see uh, supplicant is with the dot one X uh, uh, supplicant download role. And is the same thing is getting authenticated or not? Let us check that one from the radius server. As you see below, this is the radius server I have, which is same MAC address. Let us check again, show port access client. You can see the same MAC is getting authenticated and let us see whether it is passing the same role. As you see here, the input is same. You can see A500, that is the client MAC address and the output should be dot one x supplicant download lur so that's what it is the response is coming as the user role aruba bsa it is getting passed to the uh, aos cx switch so hence this we have this uh, supplicant downloaded now what we will do is we'll enable before we do that let's do a repeat with the delay so that you know when the same client as soon as it gets the supplicant how it will get into a highest auth priority role that means it has to get into our priority role of dot one x right we will configure the supplicant onto a aos switch and watch the same client will become from a um, how it becomes from mac auth authenticated client to a dot one x client so let me uh, do a repeat with the delay of uh, five seconds you can watch this one now i'm going to enable the um, dot one x supplicant on the aos switch You can see here the username is yes and the secret I've given the password. This is how you're going to configure on the uh, AOS switch if you want to run a supplicant, right? So I'm, I've just configured that one. And let me end this one. You keep watching this window. You can see here the same client. Now it is got authenticated with the onboarding method as dot one X where the earlier it was a Mac auth. That means as soon as it downloaded a supplicant onto a client like access points or laptops or your phones, the same client can trigger the dot one X authentication. It can send the EAP response or the ones as soon as the switch sends a EAP identity, it can send a EAP response. Then with that EAP response, the same client can be authenticated with dot one X authentication. And we will see that one on the clear pass side. You can see here uh, the client, the username, which supplicant is trying with the username is Yash. And you can see it got authenticated and assigned with the role called, uh, let's see that role name. It is called as data role. So now it got assigned with the data role. Let us check that one, whether the data role is assigned or not. You can see here, that's the same role which got assigned onto, a, onto the client. So let us check that one in detail. So you can watch here, this is the data role which got applied and all the parameters are on that role, whatever the role parameters are there, all the role parameters are applied. Let us check that one. This is the data role and you can see it has associate with the captive portal as test and the reauth period as five and the cache reauth as the 300 and the VLAN access is given as 10. So with check show port access client detail, so the, that command, will tell us whether the, all the attributes are same. You can check this one, the access VLAN, which was assigned as 10 and the cache reauth is five and the captive portal address, everything is perfect as we see on the screen. So this completes the demonstration of port access auth priority, which is very important when you have a client which comes up with no supplicant loaded onto those clients. Let's move on to another enhancement security enhancement feature, which is coming as part of 10.6, which is cache reauth. Let's move on to the presentation. So as the name itself suggests, cache reauth, that means reauth will be cached. So whenever you a client is authenticated and it has a reachability to radius server. The reauth request will reach the radius server. It will send the reauthentication, isn't it? 
the client let us consider is trying to do a reauth by the time due to some network changes the triple a server becomes unreachable you know that the client is a valid client like a student or any client which you already know and for those client you want to keep the cash reauth as the higher period because you don't want to lose a connectivity accessing any services for that student during his maybe uh, exam times right for those thing those use cases you can enable cache reauth on the interface level which was already supported in the earlier releases what is getting introduced as part of 10.6 is the feature which is on the port access role now you can configure cache reauth earlier it was there on, as part of the interface that means all the clients which gets onboarded on that interface will get the same cache reauth period now on this interface you can have a student you can have a visitor you can have a role level where you can clearly differentiate for a student you want to have a cache reauth as more for a visitor you want to keep it as a very less so that you get that uh, cache reauth benefit with the student not for a visitor right so as you see on this screen this is how you are going to configure the cache reauth under a role uh, port access role and as you see this is the cache reauth period as the higher it is better and the reauth period should be always lower because until unless the reauth tells it is unreachable cache reauth cannot get converted isn't it so reauth period should be less and cache reauth should be more if you want to use the feature and default when you are doing a uh, if you ask if you ask the recommendation keep the reauth period also more for the roles like student or your enterprise users keep the reauth period more and the cache reauth period more where you don't have the your enterprise users like visitors there you keep the uh, reauth period and the cache reauth period as lesser so let's move on and see how it works as soon as a radius server becomes unreachable this unreachable remember is very important when the radius server is tracking that means authenticator and authentication server there is a one keep alive which is running is a radius right that protocol has a radius tracking feature so you have to enable radius tracking feature and you have to reduce this interval if you want to see it quicker you have to reduce this interval whenever you the whenever you see this unreachable then only you will start seeing your client moving to a cache reauth period okay that means radius server became unreachable the authenticator come to know that aoscx switch came to know that the radius server is not reachable hence it will make the clients depending on the role configuration in the case if i configured that role with a cache reauth time then the for those client the cache reauth will be applied for all their clients what will happen it will fail right because the, it is not reaching the radius server and it will fail all those clients which are not having the cache reauth will fail the trusted clients will get onto a cache reauth so let's see the demonstration of this feature now so let's see whether the radius server is reachable or not yeah you can see here the radius server is reachable and i have a client which was just authenticated with the data role let us check whether the data role is having the a cache reauth or not that is very important before we uh, demonstrate this feature right port access role data role has the cache reauth period which is configured as 3 and the reauth period as 5 and let us check the radius tracking interval radius this is the radius server show radius server detail is the command which i am executing which i have earlier so you can see here next tracking request is going in 55 seconds so what we will do we will uh, shut the interface which is reaching the radius server now so as soon as we do this before the next tracking request reaches as soon as it comes to know that radius server is not available the client which you are seeing show port access detail command this client will become get into a cache reauth period right let us watch keep watching this one uh, let's say repeat delay with 2 so you can still see it is dot one x authenticated and uh, it's it's still in the reauthentication stage it does not reach the um let's check the first of all the it has become unreachable or not as i told you this is the very important thing once this becomes unreachable only then you will see the cache reauth getting triggered because 
until unless the radius server reachability the request reaches the radius server it will not know whether it is unreachable or not for that you need to change the default timer to a lesser that means one minute so that the tracking request reaches the radius server so let us check now the um, it has become unreachable now let us check the show port access detail command where you will see a cache reauth you can see here very clearly um, it has reached cache reauth we gave as 300 seconds so we have enough time to watch this show port access client detail you can see this client is authenticated earlier it was authenticated with dot one x and the same role continues for that client without any change till we have this cache reauth enabled on this uh, port access role so this is the feature which is getting introduced as part of 10.6 which is nothing but cache reauth uh, instead of only having it on the interface now you have a flexibility you can configure that on a role so we completed the demonstration of this feature let's get on to the slides back give me one second the additional resources for these two features are in the uh, aocx security guide one is the html link another one is the pdf link i have pasted it twice uh, sorry for that so these two links will definitely help you to uh, go through these two features enhance security enhancement feature when it's a auth priority as well as the cache reauth as part of 10.6 thank you for listening have a wonderful day